Hi everybody, Steve Geralt here at The Garage in Brooklyn on our fourth and final episode of our virtual production series here for B&H. Today, we're gonna to go a little bit into post-production and showing you what these video files look like when they come off the RED camera, how we could cut them together and do some fun things with them. With that, we're gonna go over the whole Phantom, Phantom Track Ghost Frame feature and show you how that looks. So just so you know, to clarify, there's three terminologies used for the same thing. Phantom Track is Red's, you know, terminology for this feature. Uh, one processing device uses Ghost Frame, the other one calls it Phantom Track, but basically at the end of the day, it's the alternating frames on the LED wall and the camera doing that with the video file. So here I'm gonna show you how this looks. So I brought my files into Resolve here, and as you see, I dragged a couple of them on the timeline, and as you see, these are two clips that have the same number, just a different lettering scheme, because that's going to show you that those are the same clip, they're just the alternating phantom track version of each other. So if you see as I click and disable and enable those clips, you'll see that one is getting a green screen pass and one is getting the Unreal environment simultaneously. So as I scrub, let's go ahead and play through this. So as you see, here I am in the background and you know I could go ahead and turn that off. It's a green screen, you turn it back on, it's the background. I could turn it on, it's green screen. I turn it on the background, it's pretty amazing. I could do this all day long, I swear to God. Um, so as you see, from this one take, we got two takes that you could use, you know, the green screen to do an alpha key or a luma key, and uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. So, well, let's show you how this could actually, you know, cut together with a real use case too, right? So, you know, let's say I wanted to go until, you know, this point here, and then suddenly, you know, switch the green screen, or let's say we had another background. It would just be a hard cut, and as we kind of move through here, boom, now I wanted to replace this part of the airport later, and I'm gonna re-render the background in Unreal. I could actually do that, right? So it makes it really easy if, let's say, you wanted to shoot an environment, and this happens in VFX and movies all the time now, where basically they'll shoot something on the LED wall, but it might not be the final art that's gonna be behind everybody, but it's pretty close, but it's enough so that you get all the nice reflections on the surfaces, like as you see here, you know, as I turn this on and off, this iPad up here that was on this surface gets all these beautiful reflections off the wall behind it, you know, especially as I come around. You see those reflections, if we were shooting green screen, they would have to try to replicate what would be in there, and that would be a nightmare, you know? And even just the light coming through the chair, like all of that, and let's say, you know, in post now they wanna add more clouds and they wanna add more planes flying through the sky and all that stuff. They could actually use the, the bottom part with all the beautiful reflections and just add that on top with a lot less pain and suffering, you know. The one to really note here is this water bottle, right? If you're trying to replace that, that would be a total, total nightmare trying to replace those refractions or those reflections in there because that is just really hard to replicate in post. So now that we have that going, um, let's move on to a little bit of the edit of putting these two clips I did earlier together. All right, as you see here, I've loaded two clips that we shot. One has me in the foreground over here, as you see, as I scrub through here. And then one we shot, we did multi-pass, so one has me in the background. And for this edit, I wanna have myself in both of those positions. So the easiest way to do this is basically, let's see where I wanna make that transition. So I'm gonna start with me in the foreground here, and let's say right around here I disappear. So this is a great opportunity for me to make that transition. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a cut there, and I'm gonna get rid of this half. I'm gonna turn that clip back on, and we'll see what happens here. So. Oh, whoops, I did this backwards. Uh, here we go, we're gonna do that the other way. I delete this half, okay. Now we go. So now let's see what that hard cut looks like. So here I am, I'm talking in the foreground, go to drink my water, you know, we come across the computer, and as I kind of come over this way, then, oh, look at that, I'm over here again. So what you might have noticed though is <laughs> And this is something that we could have changed in our Unreal setup if we wanted to. When I do that hard cut, the, actually the sun changed slightly because the clouds are actually moving for real in the Unreal world, so it's almost like we're actually outside. 
And if we're really going to be perfect about it, we can make sure that when we did both of these clips, the clouds were in the same place. But I can show you how to get rid of that. So basically, what we could just do is do like a 24 frame cross dissolve on that. And let's see how just that does as far as blending that away. You know, it just feels like it gets a little brighter over there. I could kind of push it a little later probably and see if I could even hide it even more. Yeah, so there you barely really notice it at all. I could probably even go a little bit more. And once again, if I needed to, I could use that green screen pass that I have and use the background pass from the one with me in the foreground and throw that behind this one um, if we wanted to get into keying and how to put that all together. But once again, it's a great reason why you have it in your back pocket as, a, as something that you capture at the same time if you can. So here we go, I'm gonna play it through for you. You see all the beautiful reflections of our airport. Here we go, you know, I could do a voiceover, garage water for your very, very thirsty Steve Geralt at the airport. He drinks garage water all the time. <laughs> so here you go. As you saw there, the fade was probably a little too late. You saw me actually blend in, but just something we could always fix by trimming this back a little bit. Um, but either way, it's more to give you the sense of what we're doing here and how it all works. So thank you so much. Now let's get on to the next thing. And here we are. So this is our incredible ghost frame meets phantom track meets lighting changes all on top of each other with multi-pass on top of that. So this is the most extreme version of the demo that we did that really shows you how far this technology could go. It also shows you how complicated this technology can be to get just right because these tools aren't necessarily really built for this. So let's dive into the screen here and I will show you what we have. So as you see here, there's six clips on my timeline already. I went ahead and just put them all on here. I picked one for the beginning scene, the middle scene, and one for the end scene. So basically, as you see here, this is one for the beginning scene where I'm gonna go pouring the Mountain Dew, and then we'll get into the other two spots of it. And as you see here, if I turn off this top track, suddenly it's nighttime including the lighting, everything has changed and this is the same exact shot. Oh my God, that's so crazy. Here we go. So as you see, as I scrub through here, like that is nighttime, that is daytime. And we are totally changing the lighting in the foreground and the background using all this crazy technology. Um, so this is the same for all these clips. So you see we have a daytime, nighttime here, and then a nighttime and a daytime here as well. So as we cut through it, um, as you see, the only thing that moved was the drinks that moved around a little bit um, and stuff like that. So basically, um, as far as, you know, we got this off the red Raptor XL, um, just to sh give you a sense of what we've done so far for color is all I did was apply the LUT that I got when I was using in the camera, which is the, you know, Rec. 709, low contrast, soft highlight roll off. So that's a nice starting point where I like to use for my color correction. So now let's, let's cut it into this. I could have so much fun. Just to get it started though, this is the beginning scene. So I'm gonna, at the most, I'm gonna use that until about here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a cut into that one so I know that that's the end of the beginning scene. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. And then here you're gonna to get to the middle scene, which would start at the earliest, right around that cut moment, exactly. Um, actually, I might need a few frames before there. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump before that cut and put a cut there. So I have a little bit to blend with if I need it. And then on the last scene here, it's after the middle, we go into the end. So that's where I'm over there. So let's say I'm gonna cut around there. Oh, oops, not there, there, there you go. Okay, so at least that gives me my markers for beginning, middle, and end as you can see on the screen. Let me show you something real quick. For those of you that have never done multi-pass, um, which is running the same movement multiple times, um, you wanna line up your clips, right? Because every time you roll the camera, then you wait to do the move and there's a little delay there. So with that, um, a cool trick to use is to basically put two on top of each other like I did. Oh, well, actually, no, I lied. This is two on top of two, really. So I'm gonna just turn off the top one here, the top one here, and we're just gonna look at these two clips here. 
And what you can just basically do is change the opacity here. Um, and you could actually see as I do that, I changed, I came and went, but the scene is the same. So um, that's pretty cool. Uh, one thing you could do as well is uh, here, I'm gonna do this even, I have one more here that I could look at, right? So I have this one and this, you'd actually see me as a ghost uh, from the other shot, you know, in there eating Doritos, of course. Um, and, uh, you know, and actually I just see, I saw right now that there's actually, see, there's a little bit of change in between these two. And another good trick to do here is uh, you could do what's called difference mode. So, and then I'm gonna go back to 100% opacity. So now you see it's showing me what's different between these two frames. So as you see, I'm probably off by like a frame here, basically in the movement. Uh, I'm gonna move that a little bit that way. So you can see right where I'm off a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I could shift this one timeline over just uh, yeah, boom, there you go. You see how the back wall just lined up there. Uh, let's play it through. You know, and the reality with Phantom Track is you're technically off by one frame, right? Because it's alternating um, between the two of them. But you see at the very end, I line up beautifully there as well. Um, so sometimes you have to tweak a little bit based on what part of your timeline you're gonna be using it for, but you can see <laughs> there I am, there I'm not, you know, I'm everywhere all at the same time. So um, our track should all be lined up pretty good. And now I get to play a lot here. So I know this is the end, so I'm gonna go just delete off of my timelines the parts that I know I'm not gonna use. So that's the beginning, there you go. Um, and oh, wait, I think I deleted one thing too many. There we go beginning um, all right so that's my beginning that's my middle and that's gonna be my end once I trim off the rest of that uh, all right so let me do a cut right in here <laughs> this is tricky I'm, I'm I'm really on both sides of that shot so I'm gonna have to be smart on how I blend that together uh, so here if we play is through here so you see I'm pouring, I'll scrub it to make our life a little easier. I'm pouring it. <laughs> Cause the idea is I'm gonna speed ramp into some of those slow motion pour moments. And then suddenly here I come again, <laughs> I'm pouring the water and then we keep moving here, still pouring the water. And then we're gonna cut across over here and suddenly, yep, yeah, I gotta get that. That's not quite lined up perfectly right now, timing wise but you get the idea. Um, so let's just do one more little adjustment to that opacity uh, and see where my timing is off there. So, cause you know, we want the very best and post-production, you know, just sometimes takes a little while. It's tricky, there's a lot going on in this scene. Okay, I think right there, I'm gonna use my little difference trick I showed you. All right, let's get to the fun stuff though. So basically right here, we're loving this, but now let's say, you know, I wanna to go to nighttime. So all I have to do right now is I could put a cut in that one and like halfway through this pour right here, suddenly, boom, we're in the nighttime scene and then we're gonna keep moving and you know, I'm finishing my drink and here we go. Oh, waiting for my plane and suddenly, oh, it's the daytime again. And here's Steve again, you know, and I'm pouring my drink and I'm going to go ahead and trim this right here as we speak and you'll see, you know, boom, we cut to nighttime, you know, you see the light change to the liquid and everything right as we go there. And then, you know, oh, wait, Steve's gone and now he's over here. It's the day again. He's eating his, his Dorito. And I'm going to go ahead and throw one more cut in here. Uh, boom, it's nighttime and I'm drinking my Pepsi. So this gives you just a quick sense of what this can be. And you know what it is? I will polish this and we're gonna put it in here and you will see the final cut of this all kind of coming together. But you know, I just wanna show you one more thing on how we could do these transitions. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo those real quick. Um, so the other cool thing we could do is actually do a wipe, right? So let's say I wanna start here and I'm actually going to uh, 
crop this. So I could crop the right side of it. So this, this is where it gets real fun, right? So this whole story I could make a split screen story, right? So we're gonna start moving here. Oh, there we go. And as you see, <laughs> half the screen is daytime, half the screen is nighttime, even the ice cubes are moving across the screen. Um, and that's pretty crazy. Um, and as you know, things move through the scene, you know, half of it is daytime, half of it is nighttime. And it's pretty unreal to just kind of see this happening. And here we cut to the next scene. Um, if I wanted to do the same thing, let's say I cropped the right to 938. So, and we could actually make this a transition, right? So let's say I liked coming into here and we're gonna make that a point there. And then I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna wipe that in from uh, the right side like that. So I'm gonna go all the way across. So now when I play that back, oh, come on baby, you can do it. <laughs> you can see that wipe coming across. I mean, it's pretty incredible. It's pretty cool, you know, and we could play with this all day long. And let's say now I wanna come back, you know, and crop from the top, I could do that as well. Um, you know, the possibilities are endless. Uh, we could be here all day long, but uh, one other fun, just one last one, like right here, let's say I wanted to do a uh, crop from the uh, top, you know, so half of me is daytime, half of me is nighttime. Um, we could do that as well. And it doesn't have to be a perfect transition. You could soften that, you know, how that comes in and out. As you see, I'm literally wiping it in and out of things. So part of the scene could be in the day, part of it could be at night. You could do shapes on this, you could do whatever you want. You could really go crazy. The lighting tied to the Phantom track is cool and obviously adds a lot, but I think even just having two different backdrops is really amazing in what you could do in your edit. Thanks so much for sticking with me and going through all of this. I mean, it's so much fun. I hope you learned, just got your creative minds going on what the possibilities are here with virtual production, with me, Steve Geralt at The Garage and b &H working together. So make sure you follow along, you subscribe, you like, and please leave us comments. Let us know what you think. What do you wanna learn more about? Let us know. We wanna do this for you. So do that and we'll see you next time.